This video is about polymers. Just a quick recap of what polymers are. Um, they're basically long chains of repeating units and polymers are made when you change a monomer, something like um, ethene for example, into a polymer. So this process back in C1 you remember is called um, polymerization when a monomer is turned into a polymer. So if you had ethene, the polymer of ethene would be called polyethene. And all these polymers, or most of them, start with the word poly. So that's how you can recognize they're a polymer. And they make really useful plastics and loads of things around every day that you use are made out of polymers. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, all the kind of um, plastic materials you use in your day-to-day -day life are polymers. And if you had ethene, um, which is simply two carbons with a double bond and hydrogens, you can then turn that into a repeating chain polymer and therefore you'd break the double bond and you just have a long chain, endless long chain of ethene molecules but now they're all joined up with no double bond and we call it polyethene. So you can see all of these are repeating the same unit. If we took this one for example that would be very much like the ethene but without the double bond and a, and a polymer it's just a long chain of repeating units. For the C2 topic you don't need to know too much about this process as this was covered in C1 but this is just a little recap to help you um, understand what we're talking about today. So I'm not going to draw polymers today as all of these carbon and hydrogens together. Instead, I'm just going to draw them as wiggly lines. So just remember that this is what they are, but for C2 we only need to really represent them as wiggly lines. Now when we do this process by turning a monomer into a, into a polymer, this polymerization process, if we change the conditions during polymerization, we can make different plastics or different polymers. We can have low density polymers and we can have high density polymers. So in this process here, if we change the conditions when making a polymer, conditions such as the heat or the pressure or the catalyst you're using you can then make either a high density polymer or a low density polymer for example you don't need to know the exact conditions that are needed to make low density or high density polymers but um, you do need to know that if you change the conditions like a pressure or a catalyst like the pressure or a catalyst, then you can make high density or low density. So polyethene, for example, you might see um, the shorthand as low density polyethene or high density polyethene. Um, and they look structurally slightly different. Clues in the name really with um, these polymers so low density, that means there's not going to be as many polymer chains together in an area as there would be with high density. So low density polymers actually have a lot of branching coming off the polymer chains. Okay, so a lot of branching on these low density polymers. And I like to remember that um, as something which is preventing all these polymer chains becoming really close together. So because of this branching, this chain here, for example, can't squeeze up tight to this one. And therefore it's low density polymer. So there's not as many chains in a given volume as there would be in high density. So these branches are signifying a low density polymer, whereas on the other hand, a high density polymer, the branches tend to be 
closer together sorry the polymers tend to be closer together um, without that branching so here we've got branching here we've got no branching and the polymer chains close together okay so polymer polymers then can be high density or low density and whether they are high or low density depends on the conditions that are around when those polymers are made now the two different types of polymers that I want to talk to you about are thermo softening and thermo setting. You really need to look at the names of these to give you clues as to um, how they behave. Thermo meaning heat softening plastics can be softened and reshapen with heat. whereas thermosetting cannot. So you can't melt and reshape a thermosetting plastic, um, but you can do a thermo softening plastic. So look at the words there, thermo softening. It will soften with heat and you can recycle thermo softening um, plastics by heating them up, reshaping them and allowing them to cool in that new shape. They look slightly different. Again, they're structures that we need to recognize. The thermo softening have lots of kind of loose chains overlapping each other a little bit, um, but loosely tangled together in a thermo softening plastic or thermo softening polymer. So a thermo setting polymer looks slightly different. It's again got polymer chains. But this time, as well as a polymer chain, they also have cross links between the chains. So thermosetting polymers have these cross links between the chains. So if you see a polymer like this, you should recognize it as a thermosetting polymer. These are cross links. These are actually um, strong covalent bonds holding the chains together or keeping them in place. So setting, it's almost like they're set in place. Thermosetting polymers have these cross links in between the polymer chains, whereas thermosoftening polymers um, are just chains tangled over each other and they can be reshapen with heat. So, examples then of um, thermosoftening polymers things like um, plastic bags and bottles. Whereas thermosetting polymers tend to be things that you don't want to be um, shaped by heat. So things like cooking spatulas, um, polymers that go into car tyres, things like that. Anything that you don't want to be um, misshapen when you heat it up. So that's basically it for polymers for this topic. You've got the two different types here, thermo softening and thermo setting. Thermo softening can be reshapen with heat, so it can be recycled. Thermo setting can't because they've got these cross links in between the chains. And looking back at what we did with low density and high density polymers, in low density polymers there's lots of branching off of the chain, so we can't squeeze those together. Whereas high density um, polymers, there's none of that branching on the chain, so all of them can be closely um, pushed together, and that's what gives you a high density polymer. The next little bit is just for anyone taking the higher tier. So, just for people taking the higher tier, we just need to know a, um, a little bit extra about thermo softening polymers. And that is the idea that they have weak intermolecular forces. Between the chains. So these chains that tangled over each other here. Um, in between these chains. I'll just draw them uh, as a little 
dotted line for you to see there are weak intermolecular forces in the chain so they're diff it's different between the cross links because the cross links here um, represent an actual bond these just have weak intermolecular forces so weak forces then holding those chains roughly together but it does mean that because they've got these weak forces it doesn't take a lot of energy to separate the chains that's why it can be reshapen with heat because not um, a lot of energy not a lot of energy is needed to separate the chains and that is why they are easily reshapen with heat. That's why if you add a little bit of energy to this, it will shake it all up, and then you can um, reshape it. All these tangle polymers can move around a little bit and um, shape in or and take the form of the new shape that you want it to. So just that extra bit for higher. A lot of the higher stuff seems to actually tend around this idea of intermolecular forces. So if you try and remember that for a lot of the higher stuff, really. Um, weak intermolecular forces between the chains allows them to be reshapen easily with heat.